Dawn and folks that geese didn't ride saddles. <laughs> Someone fact check that. <laughs> welcome back, spooky cuties, or welcome to my hilariously low budget channel. Tis I, of course, your medieval ghost host with the most, Patricia Hudson, here to bring you a dumb short video that I considered making into a TikTok, but I was like, you know what? This deserves so much more conversation. I'm doing a YouTube video for it. And on that note, let's talk about 15 amazing medieval insults that you can still use on your friends today. <laughs> so I was sitting at work and I was like, I want to insult people medievally. There are many old timey insults that I love, like mini hammer and of course nincompoop. Who doesn't love that? And I am the queen of dumb insults, of varying degrees of vulgarity, some of which people use and credit to me to this day. So I figured, hey, I found this site. This was fucking funny. We're going to talk about it and we're going to discuss how insulted we would be, how hard we would laugh. <laughs> How much fun we'd have just seeing them and if you enjoy them please tell me your favorites down below because i am interested <laughs> i am just looking down already giggling so of course i'm gonna have the site here and i'm gonna read them off and they have a description on what they mean and we're gonna have a good time so come wench we are traveling back in time and we're insulting people because hell yeah. <laughs> Without further ado, number one is coxcomb. Coxcomb, typically aimed at men, signifies a vain simpleton. <laughs> I kind of like vain simpleton more than coxcomb, to be honest. But further, its tone may even add a touch of fondness. It loosely alludes to a jester's cap with red stripes or a rooster's comb, depending on the utterance's flair. I do like it more, picturing the hat. Coxcomb is pretty funny, but I do like vain simpleton more. <laughs> I like the description more than the insult, but that's okay, it's just the first one. We're giving it an option. Actually, with me trying to fix my wig, while talking, ultimate multitasking, I guess that makes me a vain simpleton. <laughs> I can't help it. My wig, it moves, it bugs me. I touch. Touch, touch, touch. <laughs> Number two is fusty lugs. This is the word for a ponderous and particularly clumsy person. I am a foxy lug. Fusty lugs, apparently. <laughs> This term typically denotes a disheveled woman. I think I'm being personally attacked right now. <laughs> Among the plethora of medieval jibes aimed at women, it evolved from fusty, which depicted something as stale and deteriorating. <laughs> I love that. And I am so with love referring to myself as fusty lugs now. That is amazing. Yeah, that, yeah, ponderous and particularly clumsy person, disheveled woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that applies to me pretty good. Number three, we have mumble crust. In the realm of medieval humor, mumble crust held a role akin to today's meme references. This term was emblematic of comedic plays, where it personified a toothless beggar a recurring character that drew laughter from audiences. <laughs> the character's name itself hinted at a grumbling demeanor and a lack of dental fortune. One of my favorite lines from one of my historical romances, probably my childhood favorite, long story on that one, <laughs> but in this one, uh, the two sisters, two Victorian sisters, are talking to their brother, the Earl of Wycliffe, and Aline mentions that well, she, she's talking about their love lives, pretty much. 
And her brother says that he doesn't want to be saddled with him, with him, with them until he's bald and toothless. And she's like, he, 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 picturing her brother as a hairless old, sorry, toothless old codger. Always makes me so happy. <laughs> well, then again, th those books are also where I got Ninny Hammer from. I like Ninny Hammer. <laughs> Number four, we have a Scobber Lotcher. An additional entry in the repertoire of medieval taunts to irk your indolent colleagues. Oh, I can use one. This term signifies a holiday or respite from labor, stemming from the archaic English word, the scobber lout. A scobber lodger diligently avoids exertion and is further adept at hardly working. Oh, I like scobber lodger. Oh, that is perfect. I'm a fusty lug surrounded by scobber lodgers. That is amazing. Can you imagine getting called into your works HR for calling someone a scobber lodger? <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Especially having to explain. I am down. I am very pleased. Number five, we have the fop doodle. This is the term for an individual of foolish or trivial nature. In other words, you're calling your foe a simpleton, embodying idiocy, essentially the quintessential village fool. See, the meaning was fun, but I just kind of like fop doodle as a word. Kind of like ninny hammer. I just like fop doodle. <laughs> Not as much as I enjoyed scobber lotcher, though. Gloss Petonnier. Your commoner seems well acquainted with the French tongue. For this term, term, this term translates to gluttonous fool in Old French. In other words, this medieval insult is clever means of advising one to curb their indulgence in unhealthy fare. I like snacks too much to use that one at other people. <laughs> I love snacks. I get snacky. I love chocolate. Cumberwald. Or cumber world, also referred to as cumber ground, which I like more. This term designates an utterly unproductive individual who merely occupies space. I like that. Their ineffectiveness resonates as they contribute naught but clutter to their surroundings. <laughs> Related to the word cumbersome. So I'm a cumber ground fusty lugs. That that is for sure. There's a reason I don't turn the camera around often. <laughs> Clutter. A Dalcop. You Dalcop. This is the definitive medieval insult meaning dull head. <laughs> In other words, you're calling them an idiot or imbecile. I like imbecile more than Dalcop. I mean, dull head? Cute, but it's no fusty lugs. This one's good. A bed swerver. A Shakespearean term adopted by Victorian slang. This medieval insult pegs an adulterer. This linguistic bridge between eras underscores language's timeless evolution and its role in depicting human behavior. In other words, it's a classy jab. Bed swerver is actually pretty good, especially for my lovely poly people out there. Instead of having to explain to someone who's just, you know, kind of being disrespectful about <laughs> what Polly is. Just be like, <laughs> I am a bed swerver. Consensual bed swerver? I don't know. It's just fancy and I like it. I like it. It's very cute. <laughs> Number 10, we have Saddle Goose. In medieval times, Saddle Goose was a belittling label for an insignificant fool. This term gained traction during the Renaissance, as it dawned on folks that geese didn't ride saddles. <laughs> Can someone fact check that? <laughs> Can you imagine if it actually took them that long? I have questions. And saddle goose is pretty funny. I like it. That's a, that's a good one. Oh, okay. Number 11 is 
Leverator. You probably guessed this one. No, I did not. Liver Eater. <laughs> Lever Eater. L Liver Eater? Liver Eater? This phrase offers an unkind insinuation of someone's corruption and self-serving motives, similar to pâté. This insult has its roots in Ghent, Belgium. In other words, it was aimed at describing well-fed bankers focused on amassing wealth. Huh? Was liver fancy? I don't eat meat. I don't know these things. Uh... Eating liver means amassing wealth. Je ne sais pas. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Nah. Too confusing for my 5 a.m. brain. <laughs> Ron yawn. <laughs> Yet another derogatory slang phrase aimed at women. Oh. However, this medieval insult labels a Ronyon as an aged and ragged old lady. Aw, that's so mean. Come on, why are we being mean to them? <laughs> this term finds its roots in the old French word rogne. We do not recommend using this word as it sounds really mean and awful. There's nothing wrong with being aged and ragged, okay? But then why did they include it when the whole title's the ones you can still use today? That doesn't make sense. Thirteen is harpy, and we all know what a harpy is by now, don't we? This medieval insult is referring to a woman of ill temper, or one who seizes greedily. Its origin lies in the ancient mythological creatures bearing the same name, known for their winged monstrous forms. Sounds like you. <laughs> if, I don't know if that picked it up, but he just said that to me. How rude. <laughs> In other words, a selfish lady. Meanie? It was funny. Could be used as either noun or adjective. I am a fusty lugs. Thank you very much. Second last, we have Quizby. This is used to refer to someone who does their very best to avoid work. I work with quite a few Quizbys. Further, it's one of the best medieval insults to annoy your coworkers or insult them especially in the face of their lack of performance. Don't make me call you a Quizby. <laughs> and then finally, we have the Trencher Man. Among the array of medieval taunts to insult overindulgent eaters. Aww. This term, however, seeks to reproach gluttons for their excessive consumption. In other words, you should probably not use this medieval insult in any space where political correctness is a concern. But, who is going to connect that? I feel like it's one that it's bizarre enough that no one's going to be like, ho, 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 you're making fun of me. I think they'd be more like, eh? I don't know, but... Some of those were pretty good. I definitely got some new favorites. I am very glad I did this and that I did it in this format so that I could blather on even longer. I couldn't do this on TikTok, no. I share my long form blathers just for you. You're welcome. <laughs> well, please tell me which one was your favorite down below. I'm, I'm in love with Fusty Lugs. <laughs> Best one ever. And on that note, lovelies, I hope you have a wonderful day. Behave yourselves. And I guess don't call anyone a Ron Yon or a Trencher Man, because apparently it's very rude. <laughs>